Welcome, welcome. Listen, we are back with another episode of the Government Coins Podcast. And as y'all know, every week it gets better and better. So this week is also going to be absolutely amazing. I'm so excited uh, to tap into this. We're going to figure out how to do business with the city of Houston. And today we are joined with Dr. Portia Jackson. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. PJ. Would you mind telling us a little bit more about yourself? Sure. So hello, everybody. And it's a pleasure to be here on with you and, and share this information. So I'm Dr. Portia Jackson. I'm the business development manager for the city of Houston's Office of Business Opportunity. So our office is a small office compared to some of the other departments at the city, but we are charged with making sure that our small businesses, especially those owned by historically marginalized groups, have the same opportunities as the others. And so we cover four different areas, business development, certifications, contract compliance, and uh, also department services in our OBO Solutions Center. And so my piece in it is in the business development part. So I'm making sure that businesses know about our services and also helping them to navigate doing business with the city because it can be kind of confusing, but I'm here to help people get through it. That is definitely a testament within itself. Like it can be very confusing navigating different government contracting processes. Um, and I, as as we're going through, I just went ahead and dropped the link to Office of Business Opportunity on the YouTube chat. So if you have any questions, go ahead and click on the link. You know how we do. We got to do some work <laughs> around here. But I'm so excited about this one. Um, and and in within the well. A little bit before we get to that. So how did you get into this space? Was this a something that you, you know, kind of stepped into or was that area that you always, you know, know you wanted to go into? What was that process like? Uh, it was kind of weird because previously I worked in business, but at a university, at a business school. So it was really with the students in, in operations of running that school. And then I took some time and the place I was before I was working with volunteers and developing volunteers. And it was more of being in the office like all the time, except when I had to go out for special events, which sometimes it was at, at camp is what they called it, which literally was a camp and that's not me. <laughs> so I was like, I need to get back to business. And I kept feeling this tug. I, I need to get back to business. And so I um, saw the opportunity in the position and interviewed for it. And when they described what it was going to be like, I was like, yeah, this is me. This is me. And so I've been here about a little bit over four and a half years. I, I love what I do. That's great. That's definitely, you know, one of those spaces we always joke about, you know, people typically fall into this, uh, mm -hmm. into procurement, into business opportunity or, or uh, diversity and inclusion. Like people typically like fall into those spaces. Um, but I'm, I'm happy you said that because overall, just understanding like your role and the key part that you play with small businesses navigating these processes, I want to kind of go ahead and tap into some of the programs that you offer. And you mentioned that it was broken up into um, different categories. Can you share with us a little bit more about how the, the process works and, you know, all that stuff? Okay. So from the business development side, we have Ooh, anywhere between six to 10 signature programs. So when I say signature, that means annual programs that we do on a regular basis. And those range from folks who just have a business idea with our annual Liftoff Houston business plan competition, all the way to those who've been in business, got it down. But sometimes when you're in stuff uh, quite, quite some time, you get stuck. You're like, how do I get to the next level? And we have programs that like I call it the capstone capstone uh, programs for those folks who've been in business and want to take it to the next level and get into the multi-million dollar uh, annual revenue range. So that's where our business program lies in those signature programs. But we also have other things that we'll do when we notice business trends or gaps in our programming. We may do workshops, collaborate with our partners, just to make sure that we're providing a well-rounded educational experience for our business owners. 
And as a part of the, and I, I went to the business development program page to, to kind of throw <laughs> some of that information on there as well. And there are a number of different trainings on this website. Um, as far as the small business uh, programs, does the business have to be located in the city of Houston? And then also uh, for some of these other programs, how can you tap into these from a digital space? Is it that available as well? So some of the programs um, are virtual and then some are hybrid and then some are just in person. Um, before everything was in person, you know, before the pandemic, but then after that things were virtual and now, so we're getting back into that hybrid space. And so they're typically local for folks who are local. And when I say local, we're not just talking about the city of Houston, we service 10 counties. So if you're in that 10 county range, yes. Anything that we have that's completely virtual, we've had folks from California, other, other different states and cities outside of this area to attend those virtual programs. We welcome everybody. We just really want for people to get the information and be able to process it. So um, we just want to see businesses succeed. So our programs are open, but if we do have something that's local, um, meaning that it's hybrid and you have to be here, I mean, if you're trying to travel, you're more than welcome to, but typically those are going to be for our local area folks. I love it. And then for your small business programs, I mean, your certification programs, can you tell us a little bit more about those programs and also uh, the benefits of it and how it can tap into it? Sure. So certification, uh, we certify in about six different areas. So we have minority business enterprise, and so I'm just going to say BE, that means business enterprise, W, uh, women, BE, uh, small, BE, disadvantaged BE, as well as persons with disabilities BE. And we also have the airport concessions BE. And included with that, we can submit your information to get the hub certification. A uh, hub is historically underutilized businesses. And that certification is governed by the state of Texas. So think about doing business with state institutions, which would include your uh, local colleges, in universities, as well as uh, the hospital, the medical center, those will be state institutions that you would utilize the hub. And so with the certification, it's important uh, to know when people are saying, I'm getting certified, it's not enough to say, I'm a woman, you see that I'm a woman. I'm, I'm, I don't need a certification. What we're doing is you have to be certified as a woman business enterprise, meaning we have to show and you have to prove us, prove to us that not only is this business owned by a woman, but it's majorly operated by the woman. So that's where the certifications, why we ask for those documents, because you know how it is, you have good things and then sometimes you have the small percentage that will take advantage of it. So we have to put it in all these different rules and uh, to make sure so that's what the certification, we do the certification and the certification gives you the opportunity to work on the larger contracts and really to get your foot in the door. Um, Shirley, Shirley Chisholm is one of my uh, favorites and she talks about having a seat at the table and bringing that folding chair. That's the certification is that folding chair that she's talking about to have that seat at the table. So for folks who don't know, historically you would have these large contracts. And so if you're a small business or you're just getting into business, especially if you come from a marginalized background, sometimes you don't have the resources that other folks may have had their entire life. And so that's where our office comes in with the resources. And so the certification certifies you as being minority woman on all that that I mentioned. And it's saying, here's a contract. We're just not going to make it so large, maybe you're a smaller business and you can't handle part all the contract, but you can handle a por portion of it. So that certification allows for you to come in as a subcontractor and work on a part of that. And so our goal is to make sure that with that certification is helping you to grow your business, build capacity so that you won't need the certification. You'll be able to take on the large contract on your own. So that's really how the certification works. It works like that with the city of Houston, other government agencies, and also in the private sector, they're looking to work with certified firms. And so just always make sure that when you are looking at firms and looking for opportunities and looking for contracts, you know, 
know what certifications they, they are looking for to make sure that you have them and you're able to take advantage of those opportunities. And I love that you mentioned that because I, I wanted to ask, um, because everyone typically has like their own certification these days, does the city <laughs> of Houston have some type of reciprocity in place for, you know, whether it's SBA certifications or certifications with different, you know, areas? Is there is something like that in place as well? So uh, for the city of Houston, you know, we just love our certifications so much that we only <laughs> accept the certifications that we issue out. But there are other government agencies and in the private sector that accept our certification. So mm -hmm. if you get certified by us, whether you want to do business with us or someone else, you have that freedom to do so. And our certifications are at no charge. So that's always an added plus. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you threw that in there. Some of these certifications you definitely have to pay for. Yes. And one thing that I wanted to kind of, you know, throw in there as well, once you do the certification once, you know, it depends on uh, the other agency. I guess if we do it right now, we'll still have all of those documents to go after the next one. So absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Especially if you do the city of Houston, you're going to have all the documents for <laughs> whoever else is coming after. <laughs> no, all the documents you need. That's exactly it. Yes. So, um, <laughs> is it a virtual or digital application or, or do you have to, how is that the application? Process? No, it's all online. You don't have to mail anything to us. Just go directly to the link online. And um, I think you had asked this question. I did not answer. I'm going to back up to it. So with the city of Houston certification, it's a local certification in those 10 counties that we serve. However, if you can prove that you have significant presence in Houston, we can certify you if you're not in one of those 10 counties. Now, that's a good question. Is there a time frame in terms of how long that presence has to be in? Like, let's say I'm I'm a foreign entity. Do I have to be in the city of Houston for, you know, three years, two years in order to get certified or how would that look? So it's, it's going to depend on your company, but you have to have a current local presence and it's up to you to establish to show that presence. So some people will be headquartered in Louisiana and they might have a location in Houston and have staff in Houston. So those that's a way to establish a local presence that you have people operating currently uh, out of Houston for your particular business. Nice. Okay. Now that's different. I will definitely say I haven't seen uh, many of them like that. And so let's, uh, let's tap into like some of the small business opportunities. So once you are certified, are there different like set asides or small business events that are focused on matchmaking? What happens after certification? So what happens after certification is really getting out there to let folks know who you are and what you're doing. We as a city of Houston don't have any set asides, but we do have those goals that are placed on the contracts. And so I tell people, once you're certified, even before you're certified, you should be out there networking. You should be know you should know who are the key players. And one thing that's good about doing business with the government is we have to put a lot of stuff online. We can't just hold it. And you have to just know somebody to find out that information. A lot of this information is online. You can see the history of what we purchased. So you can kind of get some background and say, hmm, this contract might be coming up the next year. Who had it previously? Let me find out where that company is, where, what events do they go to to network and begin to, to get in that way. Um, and, I, and as you know, people like doing business with people that they know. And I always tell people, it's really not who you know, but it's who knows you. So you got to get out there and you got to network and let people know. Take that capability statement with you. And also when you are meeting different government um, officials or government people and you know that there's a contract that's coming up or possibly coming up, ask that person to make an introduction, you know, utilize us because we're here to be utilized, but also make sure that you got your information, you know, correct. And, and one thing I always tell people when you can, when you're going up to somebody and you're meeting them, if you can tell them something about themselves to show that you are actually serious about your work, nine times out of 10, they're going to help you. Right. So if you're coming up and say, hey, I know that there's a contract coming out. This person had it before. Uh, can you give me some more insight instead of them saying. 
I don't know what you're talking about because you say, well, what contract is coming up? But if you already know that, they're like, this person's really serious. We want to help. We're public servants. We want to help. So when you come with that information and all we have to do is give you the answer and not provide a whole background of something, you're going to get a whole lot farther. So always make sure you do that research. And, and if you've seen somebody speak at something, say, I saw you speak at such and such. I wanted to connect with you. And then just have that conversation and people are more open and apt to help you in that process. I love that, that, that having that point of reference, you know, I saw mm -hmm. you here, you know, I would love to connect with you, you know, share more yeah. about what it is that we do. Like, that's such a great pattern to show, like you were saying, I'm, I'm doing the work. So mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, the other part is small business events. How often do you have net, um, different networking events where small businesses could come in and possibly meet, you know, the buyers or meet the department that they're looking to do business with? Sure. So outside of our business, our signature programs, we do an annual event called Meet the Buyer. It happens every December. And that's where we bring out everything everybody so we're having all of the buyers of the major buying departments with the city they're there we're having prime contractors who are looking for sub certified subcontractors they're there we have other government agencies and their buyers there we have people who have resources a uh, little to no cost resources for our businesses and then we also bring in guest speakers talking about various opportunities that's available and so that is our biggest event that we have for our small businesses. And that it purposely is designed to connect businesses with buyers and connect them with opportunities and also, you know, give them information and give them the resources so that they can not only take advantage of the opportunities, but succeed in those opportunities. So that's what we have uh, on an annual basis, that large event. At times throughout the year, we may, if we see something is missing in the uh, programming that we're providing, then we may have an event that say, hey, come out, we want to tell you about this. Uh, we also do special events. Uh, for instance, we worked with um, the Prison Entrepreneurship Program, and they called us and they wanted to introduce their graduates into doing business with the city. And from that, we did do an event where they were able to meet with some of the buyers of the department to introduce them because they have great businesses. And we wanted to make sure that that opportunity was afforded to them as well. So we do it throughout the year, but you can always count on that meet the buyer that's going to bring in the heavy hitters. I love that. I, I just Googled the Prison Entrepreneurship Program. I think that's absolutely uh, amazing, um, that, that connection and that partnership with them. My next question would be for the Meet the Buyers event or just anything that's going on with the city of Houston, is there any way to, like, do you have a newsletter to keep up with this stuff? I know I just found the link to all of the events on the calendar, so I dropped that one in the chat. But is there a newsletter? How do I keep up with this information that's going on? Yes, we have, uh, we call it our weekly e-blast. It comes out every Monday at 8 a.m. sharp. <laughs> and it's going to have uh, two separate emails. One email is going to be specifically targeted to the procurement opportunities with us and our partners. So other counties, other government agencies. And the other one that's going to come is our networking uh, e blast. So that's going to have a list of all the different events that are happening with us or with our partners, as well as any information that can be helpful. So you will see in our current e blast, we have information about free legal services. We also have free advising and mentorship. And you will find that in that newsletter. So one about procurement and then one about those networking and education events. Where can I sign up for this e-blast? I'm, I'm looking for the uh, link to the event. Is Where can I sign up for that? It one? should be. It's on our website, probably under our Solution Center tab, and you'll be able to uh, sign up there. If you don't see it, you can always send an email to obos, like in Sam, C, like in Charles, at houstontx.gov. And then you want to include your first and last name, the email address you want the e-blast to come to, and your company name if you have it. Got it. Okay. Um, I didn't get a chance to put that one in there. Um, you said OBO? Uh -huh. OBO, S as in Sam, C as in Charles. Mm -hmm. 
at houstontx.gov. Perfect. So I just dropped that in the chat. Perfect. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. So definitely mm -hmm. reach out. Um, spend some time going on a website. Like this website is full of information and resources. I think that's probably why I, I probably missed it because it's so much and I'm trying to stay <laughs> on track. Right? Um, so, so definitely play around with this website. They have so much information on here from planning a business, starting and growing. So definitely check that one out and join that newsletter. Even if you are not in the city of Houston at this very moment, you don't know what's going to happen one, right. two, three years down the line. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, and also is like you said, it's not about what you know. It's about who knows you and you never know mm -hmm. based on the work that you're doing. There could be some opportunities that pop up. Somebody reach out. You just be ready. Okay. So join the newsletter and keep up with what's going on. Uh, we have some, and if you have some questions, make sure you go ahead and drop them in the chat as well. I've been talking so much. I didn't get a chance to say that, <laughs> um, but uh, someone said that they're they're not in uh, Texas, but they would love to see if they can work with the city of, of Houston. And, you know, you mentioned a little bit more about that. I just think it's one of the thumbs up. Uh, but you mentioned a little bit about that uh, from businesses who are outside of the yeah. city of Houston. How can they engage and and take on some of this uh, yeah. or take advantage of these opportunities? Absolutely. So doing business with the city of Houston, there's not a requirement that you have to be here. There's people who do business. I, honestly, there's companies who are not even located in the United States that do business with us. So we definitely encourage you to check out our website. So our website uh, to look at the bids is, um, in this case, they just changed it. It was purchasing that HoustonTX.gov, but now it's HoustonTX.gov slash biz, B-I-Z, with Hue, H-O-U. And there you'll see the bid opportunities and you'll have to register to be a vendor. That's very key because anybody, whether you are providing a T-shirt to us or a multi-million dollar contract, you have to register to be a vendor. That is your very first step. You don't have to be certified, of course, to do business with us. So folks who are not in the Houston area, please um, check out that website, register to be a vendor, search for those bids and you can do business with the city. Also too, for those who are in the area and who are certified, don't, I mean, always keep a broad aspect because, because there are businesses who may be from California doing business with the city. If that contract that they have has a goal on it, guess what? They're looking for local people to to um, be on that contract. So there's always opportunities. So just always never limit to yourself to where your geographical area is. There's always opportunities and, and always uh, availability for people to take advantage of that. Love that one. I'm happy we start talking about procurement uh, because that was where we wanted to like really tap into next. And I dropped the link. So biz with you, I dropped that in the chat as well. Make sure you go ahead and check that one out and register as a supplier. Start getting those updates for those opportunities. Um, but wanted to talk a little bit about money since we are here. We are in business to make money. <laughs> yes, the coins, right? right. <laughs> so our first question is, uh, what is the budget? Uh, for the city of Houston. And, and the second part of that will be how many departments are within the city? Yeah, so the city, I believe uh, for this fiscal year, we have about a $5 billion budget. And um, also on that website, uh, HoustonTX.gov slash BizWithHue, you'll be able to see the the procurement plan. And so right now, I believe they probably have it for this particular quarter that's up, which is scheduled for about, I think, $870 million spend. Um, and last year, I would say our spend, I believe, in, in procurement was $2.5 billion. And so um, utilize that website to see that spend. And there was, a, what was the second part of the question you asked me? How many departments? Make ah, up? yes. We have about 22 departments here at the city of Houston, but just keep in mind that not all the 22 are major buying departments. Of those, uh, how many of them would you say would be like major de buying departments, you would say? 
I would say major yeah. buying departments would probably be four and okay. it would be our airport system. So we have three airports that's underneath that, um, Bush, Hobby, and uh, Ellington Field. And that's where our spaceport is, which is bringing a lot of opportunities for folks, uh, as well as Bush with the new terminals that we have. We also have our general services department. That is the department that manages all the city of Houston facilities. So think about building maintenance, grounds, that's going to be a major buying department. Houston Public Works, which is, um, I think, the third largest public works department in the nation. And so that's the water, streets, um, buildings as well. Uh, and that's probably one of, between them and the airport, it's pretty large as far as their, their buying is concerned. And then you have our strategic procurement division, so uh, SPD. SPD is the buying department for the city of Houston. So all the other small departments, for instance, if they say one department says I need paper. So instead of just putting out a bid for just the paper they need, SPD will get all the paper for all the different departments that are needing it and issue out that bid. So they are a buying division for the city of Houston for those smaller departments outside of those that I named to make sure that we have the city of Houston has all the things that they need to to operate. Um, here is so someone actually mentioned they said the last Meet the Buyers event in Houston was lit. It was very well organized. <laughs> I'm so excited I love to hear that. <laughs> Come on now, they in here letting you know already. Thank you so much for that, Jersey Carter seventy six. We appreciate that. Um. <laughs> And someone also asked, are there any big projects coming up or happening this year? Okay, so you mentioned the procurement plan um, mm -hmm. and I dropped the link for that as well. Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, so thank you for that list of those um, cities and those major buyers and some of um, the, the areas that they focus on. Another piece of that question is the different procurement thresholds. So Although everyone's not a major buyer, can we talk a little bit about those procurement thresholds and how we can get in with those, you know, micro purchases? Um, yeah. You know, okay. Sure. So um, the easiest way is through purchases that are going to require a P card, which stands for procurement card, aka credit card. And so those, if if your business is set up for that, right? So construction, of course, wouldn't consist of someone using their p-card to purchase the construction services but it's going to be anything up to three thousand dollars so for instance if you are um you do shirts embroidery or something like that and the department needs to order shirts for new employees that's coming that's something they can purchase using their credit card uh, we do ask for them to get quotes for it and to purchase that but that's an easy process right easy transaction. They don't have to put it up and let everybody know they need shirts for their new employees. They can just call you up and do that. We do tell people and encourage the rest of the departments to use our certified firm directory so that our certified firms are getting those opportunities as well. And then after that, you graduate into our informal procurement. So that's anything um, up to $50,000. So up to $50,000 $50, is our in, informal procurement. The city has gotten really good at breaking up some of those uh, contracts and so that there's a lot of informal procurement opportunities for our smaller businesses who just want to get their feet wet and doing business with the government and build from there. And then after that, you get into our formal procurement, which is going to be anything over $50,000. And then with that, you have RFP. So that's any type of uh, contract or solicitation that is for firms who need a professional license to operate. So when we say professional license, that means anybody like an attorney, you have to have a license to operate as an attorney. An accountant, if we need accounting services, you have to be a CPA, that's a license that you have to have. So professional ar architecture, engineering, those type of um, professions will qualify for the RFPs but then, uh, which is also a form of um, a formal bid, but those are going to be over 50,000. 
Okay, I like that. And you the up to, you know, on the P card purchases up to three thousand dollars, those are purchased within the departments, or would they also have to go to strategic uh procurement division, SPD, for those opportunities? No, those are with the department. Keep in mind, you still have to be a registered vendor, right? Regardless of the amount of purchase, you still have to be a registered vendor. But that would be those P card purchases. It's just having that relationship with the department. Nice. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So that's one. And then the informal opportunities, are those uh, full on RFPs as well? Or is that typically when they would also ask for a few quotes? That's um, Those will actually go for public bid uh, as well. And so they would ask for you to submit a bid for that. Uh, one example is I like using this one um, is that we asked for a Christmas tree for December. It was around August or September of last year. Whoever could provide a Christmas tree for the mayor's um, ceremony that he was doing, that was an informal informal bid and that was posted so people could actually bid on that. And there's a lot of different things, different area, mail carrying services that will qualify as informal bids. So it's a lot that's available uh, yeah. in that smaller threshold that businesses can take advantage of. And all of these opportunities are, are in the same portal as the contracting opportunities that are above um, 50,000? Yeah. Okay. Yes. The only one you won't see is that P card because they don't have to post that because of the amount. Got it. Okay. Nice. Oh, so it's all in one space. That is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love it. Oh, the next question that I have around this is, what is the, I guess, the current procurement process? And we kind of talked about that a little bit, but is the first step registering as a supplier? Like, how does that work? Mm -hmm. Yes. The first step is registering as a supplier. And we just got a new system. So if you are already registered as a city of Houston vendor, when you go to that website, you'll have to click on a link. They'll have to send you an email for you to transfer your profile into the new system. If you've never been a vendor with us before, then you're going to click on new user and go, go straight into that. So that's your first thing is to register to be a vendor then it's just searching for those opportunities. So you got the informal, the formal bids, as well as the RFPs. And you'll see on that same side, it'll have search for bids. You can click there and begin to look at those. And it'll have anything that's associated with that particular solicitation. So if there's any amendments to the solicitation, if they've already had the pre-bid conference, which is a must for you to attend if you're interested in a particular bid, not only for networking sake, but if there's any questions that you have about that solicitation, that is your chance to ask it to the actual buyer and the department representatives that are there. Sometimes, you know, you may see a bid and there may be something and maybe the buyer and whoever constructed that didn't really consider something. So if you know that something should be considered, but there's a step that's missing in order to do this project, that's your time to let them know so that they can rectify that and get that bid, that solicitation solid. But you want to always go there, especially if you are a subcontractor, because that's your opportunity to see who is potentially could be the prime for you to network and make sure that they include you as a subcontractor when they submit that bid solicitation. So it's registering to be a vendor. And when you're registering to be a vendor, it's going to ask you for your NIGP codes. If you have more than one product or service that has a different code, you want to add all of the codes that pertain to your products or services. Don't just use one. If you, one is just you, then that's fine. But when you are working on these um, solicitations, if you get the contract, you have to have the matching NIGP code. So don't limit yourself if you know that you have more than one NIGP code. And even if as your business progresses, you wanna make sure you keep that profile up to date with those codes. So register to be a vendor, and then you wanna search for those actual bids. And then once you find the bids of interest, you wanna attend that pre-bid conference so that you can find out more information, also to network and also see who your competitors could possibly be uh, in, in that instance to help you pre uh, prepare your bid to submit. And then after that is just really submitting that bid. And then if you get that, then moving and performing on that and then going back, making sure that profile is updated and going on to the next one. And so that's pretty much the, the process to look at, look the whole overall of the process. 
So from there, you set it up and it's just wash, rinse, repeat. Same. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. Cool. Because I'm looking at it right now and there are opportunities up here for, you know, a video wall from $10,000 to $50,000. Like, yeah, they really, like you said, they broke, they break them down. We also have a question. Someone was asking, uh, are they all physical products or will there be some uh, something like a videography or photography in included in these prices as, or in these opportunities it, as well? Yeah, it, it could be. We do have a department, um, HTV stands for Houston Television, and they are a very, very small department, so they can't do everything on their own with their staff, and so they do, at times, look for other videographers um, to, to do that, and I know a couple of companies that have actually worked with them nice. and have a contract with them right now, so yes. No, yeah, so y'all definitely check out this this website. They have literally all of these opportunities on there um and then i have you know i know we're getting ready to like wrap it up so if anyone has any <laughs> additional questions definitely go ahead and drop them in the chat um but when we talk about payment so i've been awarded the contract um what how does payment work with the city of houston is there like any prompt payment for small businesses like how does payment work with the city of houston right so uh, of course, with the P card, that's immediate, right? So we're talking about the informal, formal, and RFP uh, contracts. So what I have to tell everybody is when you are going out for these contracts, make sure you have enough money to sustain yourself because it could take up to 90 days before you receive payment. And especially if you're working on the larger contracts as a prime, that it has to be approved by city council before payment can be issued to you. So just make sure you have enough funds to sustain your business operations when you're taking on a contract. We don't have a prompt payment as of yet, but it is definitely something that we want to look into because we want to make sure that our small businesses are able to uh, get paid and sustain their business and to grow into the prime contracting role if they're not already there. I like that. And I, I have some more questions. Um, so someone said, what about transportation? Are there any opportunities for hauling? Yep. Yep. Remember, Houston has been through some flooding issues and, you know, Hurricane Harvey. And honestly, they're still doing work, you know, from Harvey that happened in 2017, I think. So, yes, there's definitely opportunities for transportation and hauling and dump trucks and all those things. I love it. We have one more question. We have another question. Look, go ahead and get them in now, y'all, because we're about to get ready to wrap it up. Uh, Dr. PJ got to, got somewhere to be. Uh, the other question is, do you have to be certified to work with the city? No, you do not have to be certified. You just have to be a registered vendor. Um, as explained earlier, you can just go and register. And again, the registration for to be a vendor doesn't cost you any money to register. And it has a pretty quick turnaround. So come uh, so one, come all, from wherever you're at, register to be a vendor with the city. There's a lot of opportunities for you to take advantage of. Someone uh, asked a question around, what's the website again? So the website is uh, houstontx.gov forward slash B-I-Z with Q, H-O-U. So mm -hmm. biz with Q. I went ahead and dropped it in the chat um, for the people who are watching it on Instagram. You you had to go to uh, the YouTube <laughs> video. All of the links we talked about today are in that chat. Um, and thank you all so much for uh, dropping in these questions as well. Someone's asking, is there a pre bid conference for each solicitation and are they only in person? There is not a pre-bid conference for each. All of your formal and definitely your RFPs are going to have uh, a pre-bid conference associated with it. Uh, some of them are in person, but the majority of them are online. Okay, nice. There will be some that are in person where you have to do an actual walkthrough of the space, but most of them are online. Got it, okay. Someone's asking about education opportunities. Would that be with the city or would that be with the school district? Or how would that work with them? So, um, we do the city does not uh, operate the independent school districts that's a separate they're all separate entities on their own we have several school districts here in houston so it would just be contacting that particular uh, school district and going to their website looking for the words like vendor 
or procurement opportunities. And then it will follow the same process. They're all going to require you to register to be a vendor with them. And uh, none of the school districts are certifying agencies. So when their contracts do have goals on them, City of Houston certification can fulfill that goal. Got it. Very nice. And that's perfect. So you might as well make that first stop over there, City of Houston. Um, yeah. Someone actually mentioned, uh, oh, so he said, thank you so much. You, you answered the question about the logistics. Uh, so he said, BWT Logistics will definitely sign up to do business with the city. Thank you. So just appreciate it. Um, the All right, BWT. <laughs> um, the other one, we the questions are coming in. Okay. Like, okay. Let's, well, let's answer them. <laughs> okay. Um, so someone said, oh, so they were asking if this video will be posted later on today so you can capture the links. Absolutely. All of the videos from the podcast are stored um, on the YouTube channel. You can go in, check out all of the links, um, get registered, all of that good stuff. Someone's asking for construction and roofing contracts. Are awardees required to be licensed in Texas? It's going to depend on the contract. So a lot of um, rules and regulations are going to depend on that specific contract, depending on what type of work it is. But all of that will be laid out in that solicitation. Okay, perfect. So you heard that. Um, the next one is, are there any opportunities for cleaning agencies? So I, I and I just, yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got to maintain all these buildings. We have, I don't even know how many buildings the city of Houston has, but we're scattered all over the city. So yes, we got to have those buildings maintained and cleaned. Uh, that's, that's a huge, huge part of what our general services department uh, right. facilitates. So that's perfect. That's, uh, that wraps up our questions right there. Is there anything else that you would like to share or parting wisdom? And then also how can people uh, reach out or get in contact with, um, they, they're saying thank you right now, but how can people reach out or get in contact? Sure. Um, another piece of wisdom I would say is a lot of people think that with the city of Houston, contract construction is just the only game in town and it's totally not. Of course, it's going to be the majority of the contracts, but there are plenty of times where we need other things like a Christmas tree, like mm -hmm. event planning services, um, all different types of things. And I tell people to always find a city employee that comes to mind, right? So that could be a fireman or a police um, department, a police officer, or someone you see that's working on the street, and then just kind of break them down, right? So if we look at um, a police officer, we break the police officer down. What is he, what is he or she wearing? Mm. They have a uniform. We're not making uniforms, right? So we have to purchase that. We're not making paper for those tickets that we don't want, right? <laughs> but we have to purchase that. And the cars, we have to purchase those cars. Those cars need maintenance. We have to maintain those cars and purchase car washes, oil changes, things like that. Mm -hmm. They have decals that say police department and whatever else, the seals and everything. We have to purchase decals. And so you begin to break all that down, all the different equipment that a police officer needs to do his or her job, we have to purchase that. So that just gives you an idea of the amount of things that we have to purchase and the opportunity. So just find your fit in that and just be ready for it. Always have your capability statement available, wow. always network. And another thing with networking, don't you don't need to talk to everybody, you just need <laughs> to talk to the people to get you, get you to where you need to be. And always do your research as much, much as possible, again, because that's going to help you to maneuver a little bit quicker, quicker through the process. And just be serious about it and go for it and be persistent. It doesn't happen on the first time, but you just be persistent. Get your name out there. Let people know who you are and be consistent in your work and how you pursue it. And it will definitely happen. So if you have any additional questions, want to reach out, bounce some ideas off of me, you can reach me at my email address is Portia, P O R S C H A dot Jackson at Houston TX dot gov. 
And then I am always on LinkedIn. So you can feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Just send me um, a message and I'm happy to help no matter where you are located. I know y'all heard that. I'm going to go ahead and drop her LinkedIn in the chat as well. And I will tell you, she is the type to respond. That's how we got on this call today. <laughs> um, so definitely reach out. Thank you so much, Dr. PJ. Um, all of those points were absolutely amazing. People were saying thank you. Someone said y'all are incredible. Thank you, Queens. Thank you very much. So I thank you. I really appreciate you coming yeah. in here and sharing this. More, more than likely, this is not our last conversation. Um, so we'll probably reach back to have you on again and see what's going on. And hopefully, I'm I'm trying to make it to this um this this um this match this event this meet the buyers <laughs> in December um, <laughs> as well. It's, so it's, every December is going to happen. And and just thank you for allowing me to come and and just share the information. It's just been a pleasure to share the information and be here with you. And I I really want to commend you for what you're doing and getting the information so that businesses have the information mm -hmm. to, to succeed. And that's what it's all about. So I just love being a part of people who have a heart for people to succeed. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, everyone who is watching on YouTube or LinkedIn or Instagram, definitely go ahead and uh, like this video, share it uh, with other business owners that you may know that are in the area or thinking about doing business with the city or can be convinced to do business with the city. <laughs> go ahead and send it on over there. We really appreciate it. Um, in the meantime, I'll talk to y'all soon. Next week, we'll be back with another episode. So go ahead and turn on those notification bells as well. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll see you. <laughs> Bye. 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 All right, I ended the live stream. So we are good.